Hi, George here, and in this video we're going to look at the 3D printing side of the uh, virtual reality Tyrannosaurus skeleton. Uh, we use two 3D printers to actually create the skeletal pieces. Um, the first, for the larger uh, assets, in this case the let's see, the jaw and the skull were printed using a MakerBot Z18. Now, you probably heard some bad things about that printer, but I gotta say, over the past year, year and a half, MakerBot's done a great job at releasing um, hardware fixes and software fixes, as well as a new uh, extruder that I haven't tested yet, but I'm planned to next week. I just, the, the, the what is it, the extruder pluses just came in for our center. But, um, you know, it, it still, I mean, look at it, it did a pretty darn good job, and that's kind of what you expect with a printer made by MakerBot and the, the price range of that particular printer. Now, uh, to compare that though, my own personal printer, uh, a PrinterBot Simple Metal that uh, I purchased uh, as um, not assembled and then assembled myself and then upgraded the, um, what is it, the Y and the X axis, I believe, or the Z axis, I can't remember which one it is. But uh, basically, that does some pretty stellar prints for the price range as well. Now, I can't do anything quite as large, mind you, and that's why I needed the skull and the jaw on the Z18. But for the smaller prints, like the foot or the rib, for instance, it did a great job, and I was able to print these at home, test it, have some failures, and have to stick around the lab all day. But um, so after we uh, look at the 3D prints, uh, I'm gonna actually show you every, all the processing, uh, the sanding and all the whatnot, um, cleaning, so forth and so on. It's pretty much the same for both printers, although a little bit different in the middle. And then we're going to go over uh, how we attach these re retroreflective markers, which are used by the tracking system to determine the objects, the rigid bodies, position and orientation. So we ended up using um, uh, one of those 3D printing pens that I, my wife graciously pur purchased me for Christmas and uh, use it to melt into the filament, attached M2 screws, and then screwed these balls on. So the idea is that we can, of course, always unscrew these balls and use later. And that's important for us because these little balls, the markers, can be expensive depending upon where you buy them from. Anywhere from, you know, a few dollars a ball to ten dollars for each one of these balls. Printing begins uh, with using Cura to actually slice the model. In this particular case, I use a piece of aluminum foil to uh, accelerate heating the bed, which is brought up to about 75 degrees. Now, when it's finally done and printed, removing the element from it can be quite tricky. I was lucky in this case because the actual model had slight warping at the toes, which made it easy for me to um, you know, insert this utensil under the individual feet and then lightly hammer, and I mean lightly. Um, I've got some build tack on there, and the last thing I want to do is scratch it and have to buy some more. But very quickly, with a little bit of patience, it should snap right off. The next phase is simply sanding down the model. You don't want to go excessive. Uh, the PLA with excessive sanding will, of course, um, begin to get very hot and then sort of, you know, move, you know, just sort of move around. Um, after that, of course, taking any kind of hard chisel edge like a screwdriver will uh, remove any of the really big elements that Sandy could never hope to get rid of. This doesn't take too long. Um, the final check is just to move your hands all over the model and make sure there's nothing particularly rough. After that, we took a drill to it, uh, drilled a few different holes where we're actually going to end up placing the screws. Uh, the holes are smaller than the screw because we're not actually going to use this to insert the screw. Instead, we're going to use it um, basically as a location for us to insert one of the 3D printing pens that I have. Um, the nozzle gets hot enough to melt a PLA. You just stick it right into one of the existing holes, uh, and then I tend to extrude a lot of material in there to give it a nice base, and then you just push the M2 screw directly in. Because it's still very hot, the screw will cause a natural depression. Uh, perfect for then either using hot glue, or in this case, I'm using the 3D pen to completely seal up the outside, trapping the screw inside. Now, you gotta be very careful with this part. Uh, my fingers, luckily, had gotten a little bit used to this process, but it's very hot. The screw is incredibly hot as well. It really conducts a lot of heat. Uh, and then I, of course, just wait for it to cool down. And I'll do this for all five uh, screws in the, in the case of the foot. And with this marker system, I need at least four markers, but I usually try to put more than that. Uh, five is pretty good. In the case of the foot, I didn't need full coverage, so I didn't bother putting markers on both sides. I expected the user to only really hold it in such a way that the, the top part was going to need to be viewed by the cameras in the system. 
So now all I have to do is fasten the balls to the screws and uh, it's perfect. Uh, they're easily removable. I can take them on and off. I can reuse the balls for future projects. I don't have to worry about them being bound to that particular object. Now with the MakerBot Z18, removal is so much easier. It has one of these build plates you can see right here. I take it right out, lightly flex it in each direction, and it basically just snaps right off. The MakerBot also does a really good job with the rafts. I had a hard time printing this particular piece out on my printer bot. I just seemed to, it just kept, kept getting dislodged from the base. But the Z18 did a pretty good job. Um, not a whole lot of support material to work with either. Uh, all I had to do was um, snap off probably about 90% of it. The rest of it I could easily sand down or just use some sort of a chisel edge. Very, very clean. Still pretty rough to the touch though. If we're going to have first graders touch this thing, I don't want them to get cut. So a quick sanding fixes most of those problems. Now the same process is the now this is the same process as before. I'm just going to drill a few holes in. In this case, I decided to just individually drill the holes and fill them up at the same time. So I'm inserting the pen in and then of course extruding filament around the exterior. Here's just a close-up showing the same technique, pushing it directly in. You can see that nice sort of dome, um, not dome, but well-shaped hole it makes. Of course, the screws easily go on as before. No real problems here, luckily. You'll notice that these balls, these markers actually look different than the other ones. These ones have a special coating on the exterior, so they're a little bit more rugged. I can let kids play with them. I don't have to worry about things getting damaged. Now, I did run into a problem where in some cases it just wasn't able to finish the outer shell. And this is where the 3D pen comes in to play very well. Normally these 3D pens, I, I don't particularly like them. I think they're very difficult to use. I don't have the patience to draw all the lines. But in this case, when I just need to fill a hole, I just, you know, shoot as much extra, uh, filament right in there as I need to. And then very quickly just push my fingers into it. Once again, it's very hot, uh, although it does cool quite rapidly. But you want to make sure you don't burn yourself when doing this. It is, uh, what is it, between 200 and 235 degrees probably coming out of this filament extruder.